What's delaying deployment of critical sensors on one of Washington's most explosive volcanoes? Now, Fox 13 first told you a months long effort of installing extra listening gear at Glacier Peak and how it had been called off, leaving the very high threat mountain with just one seismometer. So Fox 13's Lauren Donovan traveled to the Cascades Volcano Observatory where she found out scientists have instead set their sights on another target that started to rumble. As this graph from the USGS shows us, Glacier Peak has not had an event for hundreds of years. But make no mistake, this stratovolcano has a history of violent eruptions, including the biggest the Cascades have seen since the end of the last ice age. And you thought St. Helens was bad. Well, one time Glacier Peak erupted, ejecting five times the amount of debris as St. Helens did last. So if it blew its top today, ash clouds and a wall of mud would devastate life in Skagit Valley as we know it. Question is, if this is such a threat, why wait two more years to install seismometers? Deep inside these sleeping giants, there's movement. And cool. this right here, well, you could call it their heartbeat. So here we have a screen per volcano of the monitoring data. Decades ago, a research geophysicist would have to keep their eyes glued to the data on these screens. but. Alex Yetzi tells me technology has advanced. Now she gets updates in the palm of her hand. We are always listening. We have alarms that let us know when we have large earthquakes. And she received one such warning Thursday during our visit to the USGS Cascade Volcano Observatory in Vancouver. Just about an hour ago was this magnitude 7.0 that happened off the coast of California. And you can see it here at Mount St. Helens, but you can also see it across all of our screens because it showed up on all of the volcanoes volcanoes on the west coast. Even seismometers on Mount Baker, more than 700 miles away, detected the rumblings, proving not only the power of that offshore event, but also showing just how sensitive the tech installed on our state's five volcanoes are to seismic chatter. This is uh, what uh, one of our remote field stations looks like. Equipped with 200 watt solar panels, camera and antennas stretching 12 feet high, the structure alone weighs in at just over a thousand pounds. But then you've got to account for what's inside, an additional 2,000 pounds of batteries. You can see this thing is not something that you can just pick up and carry out on a backpack. Geophysicist Ben Polk tells me after years of waiting last summer, USGS contracted a helicopter to haul four of these out to Glacier Peak, a very high threat volcano that since 2001 has only had a single station tracking its pulse. But here they are, still stuck in the Vancouver parking lot. And that's because the pilot pulled out last minute, citing their company was closing altogether. This was in the middle of August, and all of the other contracted helicopters were out fighting fires. And getting the stations to the mountain is only part of the challenge. The areas that we're accessing are off trail. Um, so we're doing a lot of bushwhacking, we're hiking up steep hills, so it's, it's not just as simple as following a trail. Some of the sites we wanted to try to put instrumentation on take two to two and a half days to get to by foot. But then nature made scientist in charge John Major change course. We were planning to try to go back out fairly soon, but in the meantime, Mount Adams decided to perk up a little bit. Historically, Mount Adams has rated lower on the priority list when compared to the state's other four very high threat volcanoes based on eruption history, proximity to populations and infrastructure. Mount Adams over the past 10,000 years or so has not had big explosive eruptions. Mostly it's had eruptions lower on the flank that have been the so-called cinder cone eruptions. But a few months back, Alex and her colleagues spotted some unprecedented activity from Adams here on her helicopter plot. We had six earthquakes in the month of September, which was different because normally we generally see one earthquake every two to three years. Um, so it just piqued our attention. Those unexpected rumblings have scientists now redirecting their efforts from remote glacier peak to the majestic monolith down south. What we're doing right now is we're kind of refocusing and redirecting a little bit in the summer of 2025. We're actually going to put some instrumentation out at Mount Adams and we're currently planning to revisit Glacier Peak again in summer of 2026. The USGS tells me getting those assets up on Adams here is going to be far easier than Glacier Peak and that's because Adams is largely accessible by road. Now it can't happen right now though because of all the snow you see here. So once that melts then perhaps they'll begin shuttling them up there.